Let me set the scene for y'all. It's 2007, you're eight years old and in the third grade. You could hardly sleep last night because you're so excited for the annual Scholastic Book Fair happening at your school library today. As you head out the door, your mom slips you $10 and with every step, you anticipate the unending supply of themed erasers, journals, pens, and books awaiting you. Who still craves that same feeling of unending imagination and anticipation? I present to you Barnes & Noble. I'm Emily Fritz. I'm Ben Barnett. Martin Pullman. And I'm Kijana Arizari. And today we're going to walk you through our brand overview, original assumptions, target audience, findings, and strategy. Barnes & Noble is America's number one bookstore and sells a wide range of products from books, music, tech products, and even toys. And as the summer of 2018, their new CEO, James Daunt, has stepped in to breathe life into the franchise across all categories, from Barnes & Noble retail, education, kitchen, college, and cafe. And his expertise was definitely needed. In February of 2018, Barnes & Noble saw 1,800 layoffs, 150 store closings, and an operating loss of almost $20 million which had people thinking that Barnes & Noble was hanging by a thread. Which leads us to our business problem. Barnes & Noble can't keep up with high operating costs and quarterly sales drops. The human problem. Well, what do you guys think? Customers perceive the store as outdated, uninviting, and sterile. So despite technological advancements, the retail book industry is worth $26 billion, and Barnes & Noble makes up nearly 24% of that market share. However, as consumers are purchasing more products online, the demand for books bought in stores decreases, and rising competition from online retailers has negatively affected the industry. With online and e-commerce shopping gaining in popularity, we assumed Amazon was our primary competitor. However, according to the Reputations Tracking Survey of 2018, Barnes & Noble was ranked number one as America's most reputable retailer, with retail giants like Amazon and Costco falling behind. In addition, Independent bookstores have gone by 35% between 2009 and 2015 and show no signs of slowing down, which leads us to our first insight. Amazon is not our primary competitor. Independent bookstores are. Our second assumption was that audiobooks, ebooks, and podcasts are more popular than print books. However, according to Pew Research, we found that print books continue to be more popular than ebooks, audiobooks, and any other format. Additionally, 92% of students actually do prefer print which leads us to our second insight. Millennials are outreading every other generation and they do actually prefer print. Our third assumption was that our target audience must be middle-aged families and boomers, as these groups make up a large sector of the market. However, further research into millennials' vast reading habits led us to understand that we were chasing a dying demographic, which leads us to our third and final insight. Page turners and self-helpers are our new target audience. Page turners are young creative millennials who value the knowledge and enjoyment that reading brings. They're 25 to 30, career focused, up to date on trends, and they know what they want. Meet Amber. She's a marketer, marketing coordinator for BuzzFeed New York. She's highly motivated, and she's a creative spirit. But she needs to take some time to relax here and there, and that's when she turns to a good book. But when she needs to pick out her next read, she looks at the New York Times bestsellers list to see what's on trend. So self helpers sit at the higher end of the millennial spectrum. They're 31 to 38 years old family focused, read during what little leisurely time they have, and they're the type to consult a store employee. So meet Remy. She's 37, living in Los Angeles, and she's a young, driven entrepreneur. But she's a single mom, and because of that, she prioritizes her family. She's got very little extra spare time, but in that time that she does have, she chooses a book and reading as a way to relax and unwind from a long day. So when we look at our audience's shopping behaviors, it's equally important to understand how they've been conditioned to actually consume information. So it's no surprise that kids today have literally been raised with iPhones and tablets in their face, and they're learning to read through technology. If you take a look at the US Census Bureau chart, this outlines computer and internet access in American homes over the past 35 or so years. You guys can see that there's been a rapid increase in advanced technology in all American homes. And this is shifting the way people are consuming information. I mean, today's millennials weren't even introduced to this kind of technology until well into their teenage years. They learned through print and paperback books. So when it comes time to relax and unwind after a long day, they don't need another screen. They need a way to relax. And we call this a digital detox. 
Now, though they use reading as a sense of escape and self-betterment, they can't help but plug into the digital world around them. And when doing so, they're mainly indulging in their laptops, TVs, and smartphones. And now we would like to show you Barnes & Noble current messaging with 2018 Nobody Knows Books Like We Do campaign. I need a cookbook for my best friend. Beginner advanced. Advanced. Sweet or savory? Both. Apple strudel or a spicy jammy? Strudel. How's this? Perfect. How'd you do that? That's what I do. Nobody knows foodies like we do. Barnes & Noble. As you can see in the previous campaigns, Barnes & Noble focused on providing customers with a quick and convenient shopping experience getting customers in and out of the store in five minutes. However, our research indicates that what customers really want is the opportunity to take their time to enjoy every aspect of the book shopping experience. As a culture, many of us perceive millennials to be lazy, uneducated, and most of all, entitled. But when targeting millennials, Barnes & Noble should realize that this isn't the case. As we dove deeper into our research, we found some interesting findings. Our audience is more than avid readers. They're goal makers and go getters, and they have a thirst for individual empowerment and knowledge. Which leads us to our hypothesis. When it comes to buying a book, Barnes & Noble isn't top of mind for millennials because they prefer what independent bookstores offer, a sense of community and craving for culture. Eager to find out more, we conducted interviews, did store observations, and sent out surveys to find out more about our customers' reading behavior, shopping behavior, and awareness of the offerings. Findings from every research method aligned with our insights. Interviews with customers at local bookstore shelf indulgence said they prefer physical books. Our survey findings further validated our research that people do prefer physical books over audio and ebooks. But that's when we asked customers, what part of the book shopping experience do you find the most enjoyable? Some said that feeling when they pick up the perfect book. Others said they like the cozy atmosphere. Some just like the coffee. But that's when we realized what we had been looking for all along, what our customers truly valued. Discovery. People read because they want to feel a sense of discovery in an environment that encourages untapped potential. And Barnes & Noble has all of the tools needed to be a creative space. So Daunt had incredible success in London. First with his own book chain, Daunt Books, that he opened and managed for about 20 or so years before stepping over to manage Waterstones, a dying book chain on the brink of bankruptcy. However, through his own unique strategy, Waterstones is now thriving. Daunt recommends that you tailor store size, design, and products to that local market. And when he stepped in as Barnes & Noble's newest CEO, he had a bold observation to make. He said, you want to love Barnes & Noble, but when you leave the store, you feel mildly betrayed. Well, he's just the man to tackle this challenge by implementing that same strategy right here in America with something the US has never seen before, concept stores. Now, some changes have been made to meet customers' needs, like updated store design and lighting, implementing cocktail bars by adding beer and wine to the menu, and improved seating for that cozy feeling. With these monumental changes, every sector of Barnes & Noble has something to offer our target audience. Barnes & Noble is more than a bookstore. They're a source for inspiration and knowledge, and now serves as a hub for creatives, which connects back to Don's indie bookstore strategy. The question now is, how do consumers become aware of this major change and start taking advantage of it? So the challenge? Stimulate readers to fall back in love with Barnes & Noble by creating awareness for its newest chapter. The objective? Create a revived, more imaginative association around the joy of finding that perfect book and a place where inspiration can thrive. And the strategy? Experience the joy of discovery. Barnes & Noble needs a new, innovative media campaign that leaves a refreshed impression. This would include a full social media rollout, TV and streaming ads, and localized ad placements for those specific communities. Keeping this in mind, our KPIs include increased brand awareness across 90% of readers, a 100% increase in social media engagement, and a 70% increase in in-store foot traffic in the first two years. So our competitive objective is to reignite that spark we all felt at our school book fairs, that eager anticipation and the unrestrained imagination. Let's recap. What does our audience crave? A digital detox a way to get out of their screens and into a good book. What does our audience need? They need a creative hub, a place that not only inspires their creativity, but fuels it. And that starts with discovery, which begins at Barnes & Noble. Thank, Thank you. you.